Hey everyone, welcome to another quick Avid tutorial. This one is on workspaces, which are something that I'll be honest, I don't use a ton or play with. In fact, I'd be embarrassed to say how long I was using Avid before I even found out you could create your own workspaces as opposed to the default ones. But it is something that occasionally can be handy. I'll show you a couple ways it can. So you have your default workspaces, edit, color, effects, audio. And what a workspace is in Avid, if you're not aware, is it's just a collection of tools and a way things are organized. You can see if I click over here to the color workspace, it brings up some color correction tools. It resizes my windows, pulls up the kind of triptych look up here. Uh, you can update each of these. So if I change something in my color workspace and update it, let's just say I want the audio tool in here for some reason, command one, I pull that up and have that open here. And then I can go Windows, Workspaces, Save Current, and it's gonna update that so next time I come back into this color workspace, the audio tool up here. In fact, I don't want the audio tool in my coloring workspace, so I'm gonna close that and go back in here and save the current again to re-update this. So these are your default ones. And if you are someone who does a lot of coloring and effects in audio and Avid, these can be really handy. You can kind of customize these the way you want. Personally, one of the reasons I was never much into workspaces is that I generally do my editing in Avid and I'll do my coloring and resolve, my effects and after effects and my audio and pro tools. And so I never really saw much of a use for those, but there are some uses for these that are handy. So one that I like to do is have different workspaces for if I'm working on a single monitor or dual monitor. So I'm working off my laptop a lot just with the laptop when I have it with me. But if I'm setting up for a long edit session at home or at my office, I'll plug in a secondary monitor and work on a two monitor configuration. So I like to have that be able to switch back and forth easily. And one way to do that is with workspaces. So let me show you how to do this. So let's say you want to get beyond just the edit color effects audio, these sort of defaults and make some of your own workspaces and this could be single monitor dual monitor like I was mentioning or it could be just something like there's certain ways you know when you're syncing footage you like to have one set of windows open and when you're editing you like a different set open and you want to just have those workspaces preset and the workspace I mentioned has all the tools and it also has the configuration of kind of where you left things so kind of how things are organized how all the windows are sized so if there's things where you might just like to change that, like maybe there's another workspace where I want everything exactly the same, except I really want to maximize my timeline and kind of have this thing stretched all the way up there. I could do something like that and create that. So here's a way to do this. I'm going to go under windows workspaces and say a new workspace and I can give this a name and I'm just going to say demo workspace here because I'm not going to keep this after this tutorial. So now I'm in a new workspace and see demo workspace is listed there. And I could change whatever I want here. So, you know, maybe let's say in this one, I want to make my composer window a little bigger. And maybe I like to have my effects open sometimes. So I'll go down to my effects editor, bring that up. And I could just leave it floating here. Or maybe I want to dock it somewhere and put it there. So now I have kind of across the top my bin container over here, my effects editor, and then my composer window over here. I'm not saying this is a particularly useful workspace for me, but let's just say I wanted something like that in this configuration. And, you know, let's adjust, adjust size a little bit. I want to make a little more height for those. And so I'm keeping my timeline pretty tiny down here. Okay, so now I got that and I can do workspaces, save current. And now anytime I, you know, I'm in a different workspace and I want to go back to that, I could go up here and say demo workspace and you can see it brings up those tools that I had and everything shaped the way that I had it before. The thing that I like to do here is not have to go up to my windows, workspaces, blah, 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 all that to find things. I like things as keyboard shortcuts as those who have listened to other tutorials of mine would likely know. So I want to put this on a keyboard shortcut. I will say this is something that whenever I first learned about workspaces, the kind of way I thought to do this didn't actually work. So I'll show you that and I'll show you the right way to do it. So, you know, when we want to set keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to pull my settings back up and go into my keyboard here. And there's my keyboard shortcuts you can see. And I'm also going to pull up my command palette. So command three on a Mac to see these. And the default thing I tried was menu to button reassignment, which is a way to take things that don't have buttons in here. So if I can't find the function I particularly want, so for instance, one that I've used is audio show waveform. That's something that I've mapped to a keyboard shortcut using menu to button. And I thought, okay, menu to button, this is in a menu, I should be able to do this. This actually doesn't work for custom workspaces. You can use this for your edit, color, effects, and audio, your defaults here, but you can't create custom ones and use the menu to button. It just doesn't seem to work right. But you might notice over here, there's a tab that says workspaces. So I can actually say, hey, I want one of these things to be my demo workspace. 
And now it gives me a button for that. So then I can just use a simple button to button reassignment and say, I'm gonna make this you know, Shift J, why not? And drag that down here. And now when I push Shift J, it'll take me right to that workspace. So I can just use a simple button to button reassignment using these. And you'll see you can assign up to 12 workspaces to buttons and then keyboard shortcuts. And you can see for me here, I actually have two of my defaults is my default editing one, which is single monitor in my case, and then a dual monitor editing one that I've made. So as soon as I plug in my secondary monitor, I can just click on that and ready to go. So we got that set and let's just check this, this works. So I'll go back to my editing workspace, just using a keyboard shortcut there. And then say, okay, I wanna to go to that new workspace we made, Shift J, boom, and it pulls it right up and I'm good to go. So that's a little bit about workspaces and setting them with keyboard shortcuts. There are more you can do with workspaces. For instance, I don't know if you've ever looked at these views down here, but you can make specific views within your timeline or other windows that will automatically load when you load up a particular workspace. So maybe there's certain things within your timeline, you know, certain track settings and stuff like that that you want. You could tie those to a workspace. If people are interested in that, I could do another tutorial on that, but I wanted to keep this pretty simple with just create a workspace, set it up the way you want, and set it with keyboard shortcut. So hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time.